Okay, Singapore. Singapore is really, really small, but uh, it is generally accepted that in Southeast Asia, we are probably uh, one of the first countries to embark, to embark on franchising. This picture has uh, a little story. You find that a lot of buildings have doors. Uh, in Singapore, there's this particular door along all the highways in Singapore. It's called the ERP. Now, ERP actually stands for Electronic Road Pricing. Uh, for many of you here who have been to Singapore, you know that, uh, like Hong Kong, uh, land is really expensive, meaning cars will be really expensive. A small Toyota, maybe 1,003 or 1,005 cc, uh, at today's rate, it might cost you US uh, 100,000 because you need to get first a certificate of entitlement which you have to bid for and the last I checked it was about almost 60,000 US so after getting the certificate then you go you, you have the right to go buy a car and with all the taxes and what have you it's going to cost another 40 50,000 so a small car can set you back by about 100,000 so because of that uh, you know because this, the country is so small the, the government has to control, you know, the number of uh, cars. So every time you use a car and you use a highway and you pass this gantry, this electronic road pricing, you actually get money deducted, deducted from your car, from the cash card, okay? But you know what Singaporeans call ERP? Not electronic, rise, uh, not electronic road pricing, but everyday rock people. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a joke, but actually it's just, uh, you know, the, the public saying that, hey, you know, government, you are charging us for everything, including just using the highway. Anyway, hopefully that makes you not so sleepy, yeah? Okay. A lot of boring statistics here, but basically, just so that you know, there are about 500 franchise concepts in Singapore. 50% of them are homegrown. 50% are the likes of McDonald's, KFC, and what have you, you know, uh, meaning they're from foreign countries. Okay, um, <clears throat> like I explained earlier to some friends, like many countries, you find that even for a country like Cambodia, there's beginning to do franchising. Uh, traditionally, whether it's America or Japan or Australia or Canada, whatever, most countries will start off with a lot of food and beverages franchises, you know, and then as the middle class sort of widens and become uh, richer, they want services, you know, so uh, if you were to check with the Japan Franchise Association, they'll tell you that there are more service franchises than there are food franchises now, you know, for example, uh, in Japan, uh, the services catering to the elderly, you know, uh, services catering to uh, pets, and what have you, you know, tuition, uh, you know, uh, centers, etc., etc. These are all uh, just doing really well, okay? So it's the same with Singapore. Uh, we are now beginning to realize that thanks to whatever technology and thanks to maybe, uh, you know, a, the good economy, uh, for example, more and more men are very bad with their hands. We call them butter fingers, you know. Uh, a lot of uh, men don't even know how to change a light bulb. So now there are some companies, you know, that uh, are coming up with franchises that will recruit people who are good handymen to go and help all these men in their homes to change a light bulb or fix the cabinet, you know, hinges and things like that, okay? So services are now beginning to come in, okay? Uh, recently, uh, we helped develop with the uh, Ministry of Health in Singapore a gym, this gym uh, is targeting at elderly citizens, those in their 50s, 60s, 70s, to build their core muscles. So this franchise is about, you know, uh, 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 setting up this gym with very specific exercise regimes for the elderly, not to build biceps or, you know, all the biceps and, and all this. Uh, it's, it's to build their core muscles so they can help themselves, you know, to go and bathe and walk, you know. So, so things like that, okay? So I will not go into all those things, uh, but 
Having spoken in 30 over countries, I, I always emphasize this. I say franchising, what are the opportunities is really common sense. Uh, you know, you always go back to the basics. You look at the piece, the product. You know, for example, if you are cleaning a uh, franchise and you try to go to Indonesia, you know, uh, for example, cover raw. If cover raw's price, uh, is say, you know, and we did some homework on that, you know, for what they charge uh, per week, an Indonesian company can employ five full-time servants. You know, so would the Indonesians want cover raw? Maybe not, because labor is so cheap there. So similarly in Singapore, the opportunities, you really have to look at and understand what Singapore is all about, you know. For example, I mentioned the ERP, electronic road pricing. Cars, maintaining cars, etc., are very expensive because the land is very limited, okay. If you come to Singapore within two hours, if you drive on the highway, you can see the whole of Singapore. That's it, just 700 over kilometers, right? That's Singapore. So if you want to do a mobile business, for example, you try to sell things you know, from a truck, it will be very tough. Because why? The, 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 the parks will not let you park the car you know, uh, to sell things. Okay? And then if you were to drive here and there, car parks are expensive. I mean, in Hong Kong, car parks are very expensive too. You know? so, so these are things you have to be very careful about. Okay? I'll give you another example. Uh, those who know Hawks Brev, Hawks Brev is a very famous steakhouse in Queensland. You know, I'm, I'm, I know of some uh, Hong Kong students who go and study in Queensland. But the name Hawks Brev, Hawk, as you know, is a wild boar, a pig. So when Don, the founder of Hawks Brev, wanted to go to Indonesia, I told him, I said, no, I, I won't represent you because it is offensive to many people in Indonesia. You have to come up with a different brand name. Okay? So, like I said, you know, you, you really have to be, go back to basics and look at the product, you know, look at your pricing. Uh, I'm, for friends who know India, do you know that you can buy a pair of Levi's jeans by installments? That's India. Because there are a segment of people who say, hey, I like your jeans, but can I pay it over so many weeks? You know? And if you were to walk into some of the mom and pop provision shops, you can get very small sachets of shampoo. Because some people can only buy that for that day to wash their hair. If you, they can't afford to buy a big bottle. You know? So price and then how you promote. Okay, like I said, if you try to drive a truck as you, your P, you know, as a place of promotion, it will not work so well in Singapore. Okay? Then the other things will be, you know, like uh, the promotion, you know, and things like that. Okay? <clears throat> Now, the good thing about Singapore is that the government is very paternalistic, okay? We are less than 50 years old as a nation. Uh, we have uh, several government agencies. SPRING, SPRING stands for Singapore Productivity, Innovation, okay, and Standards, okay? Uh, but it wants to give Singapore companies this bouncy feeling that they can spring into many other countries. Okay, so this is a board that supports franchising. IE stands for International Enterprise. It is the equivalent of the Hong Kong TDC where they have to promote, you know, com local, local companies to go overseas. And IPOS stands for Intellectual Property Office of Singapore. So these three uh, uh, statutory boards are very active. You know, for example, uh, the Intellectual Property Office of Singapore, they actually get consultants like us to go to small companies and say, look, you may not be ready for franchising, but hey, you have got this know-how that you should think about protecting. Or you have this special recipe that, is, that you have inherited from your grandmother. You know, you, you should do something about it, copyright it, et cetera, et cetera. You know? So uh, there are lots and lots of schemes to help uh, small and medium-sized enterprises. We have one show in Singapore called the Franchising and Licensing Asia. Uh, previously, it was called Global Franchising, but for five years already, we have called Franchising and Licensing Asia. Uh, then we have just about five million people, okay? Uh, like Hong Kong and Taiwan and many uh, nations. Uh, our well-educated ladies don't want to have too many babies. You know, it will affect the shape of their body. 
So, uh, so we are encouraging migration from other countries, including from Hong Kong, you know, from China, from Taiwan, or whatever, you know. But uh, um, of course, we would like to uh, get the highly qualified people to come, so that it will give Singapore a boost. Uh, we like. Taiwan and many countries, we are now giving incentives for young couples to have more babies. Yeah? So hopefully, we are hoping that it will reach 7 million. Uh, we don't know, but we're, we're, we're trying to really hard. Unfortunately, I can't contribute because my wife told me that she is no more producing. So, yeah. Okay, now, the other thing about control is that the Singapore government is also very concern about the quality of consultants. Uh, I have uh, one or two jokes about consultants, and I, I'm actually kicking myself, uh, but it's okay. You know, they say they are consultants and they're consultants. Uh, some people say a consultant is one who borrows your watch, tell you the time, and charge you for it, right? And then there are some people who say a consultant is someone who con you and insult you, you know? Uh, in Chinese, they say ku uh, wen is someone who puku ya pu wen, you know? Etc. Etc. So anyway, in Singapore, the Singapore government is very particular because when people complain, they say, "Okay, I don't want to hear some more. I will take action." So they actually form a board called the Practicing Management Consultant Certification Board. Because previously, anyone with a laptop can be a consultant, you know, and it's really kabia amto, meaning if you choose to trust and believe that this person really knows what he's talking about, you use him. Okay? But because the Singapore government gives a lot of grants very generously, there were a lot of abuse. Okay? Meaning, some people call their uncle or their ex-boyfriend or someone they know and say, let's do this project and get some money from the government. And with the money, we can split and all have a good time. Right? So no more. Government say, okay, if you want to be a consultant, the minimum you must do is go take an exam through the certification board. So PMC is really the lowest of uh, criteria for consultants. Uh, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing because then at least people are more comfortable that there are no nonsense consultants running around. Okay? So like in my team, all my consultants have to have PMC. But I make them go further. I make them do a CMC, which is a, a more international standard. Yeah? And of course the CFE, which which is from IFA, you know, uh, that's the certifi uh, Certified Franchise Executive Program. Okay, um, in Singapore, the Franchising Association, uh, because I've been a board member since 18 years ago, uh, we do a lot of seminars, something like this, you know, and most of the time it's free, and we will educate and pass knowledge as much as possible to not just our members, but also members of the public. And we also have done a lot of study, study missions. Uh, the association through my company, we have done, just recently, we have brought uh, people to Outer Mongolia. And some people say, why Outer Mongolia is such a poor country? Well, you'd be surprised, because now they have so much gold ore, and they have copper ore, and they have coal. Uh, there's a big segment of people that are getting really rich. If you go to Ulaanbaatar, the capital of uh, Outer Mongolia, there's a huge Louis Vuitton store right in the middle of town, okay? And uh, a lot of my clients have already signed up uh, companies that have got good locations. Esquire's Coffee from New Zealand, uh, Ramen Tan from Singapore, Wabab, which is a bar concept from Korea, uh, Sweet Chills from California. They have all signed up franchises within that trip. Then uh, the picture there is a bunch of... Uh, um, master franchises prospects that have gone to Taiwan to visit uh, all sorts of Taiwanese uh, franchise concepts, etc., etc. And then, of course, we do research. Um, we, we feel that uh, research uh, through the associations is important then because then we have solid objective information on how franchisors from different industries are doing. Okay? Uh, the government also has this program called the Blue Sky Program. Uh, it is uh, done by a non-profit organization called Action Community for Entrepreneurship. Basically, it is uh, a forum uh, which has no real uh, teeth, so to speak, but they organize a lot of entrepreneurship-related dinners and talks and what have you. Okay? 
Okay, that's the Singapore show last year. But uh, this year, uh, sorry, next year it will be in uh, November. Okay. And it's at the Marina Bay Sands. Uh, for those of you who have seen the casino in uh, Singapore, uh, it is said that it has, uh, the, the volume has passed Las Vegas. It's just next to Macau now. And many of my clients who are in the service industries, they are all complaining because the, the, the casino has sucked up a lot of employees from the service industries. Just one, uh, one typical uh, Singaporean, the guy on, in the picture, uh, on the left side, George. George uh, started Bread Talk, uh, which has become a pretty famous uh, regional brand all over Asia. And then after that, he, he, he came up with other brands, and he also became the master franchisee of Ding Tai Fung, which is from Taiwan. And, and then his master franchisee in Indonesia that came up with uh, the donut uh, franchise called Jayco uh, actually uh, got him to uh, also become his master franchisee. So it was a two-way traffic, meaning Brad Talk's master franchisee in Indonesia started his own donut concept, and then he went back to Brad Talk and said, no, look, I bought a franchise from you, now you buy from me, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, uh, George decided to terminate after trying out for three years the Jayco uh, uh, Donut franchise. He decided to stop it. Reason being, uh, and this you can check with Baskin Robbins and all, because Singaporeans don't like things too sweet. It's too sweet. Baskin Robbins uh, flavors were considered too sweet. And Jayco's uh, donuts are considered too sweet. Uh, there are some other donut concepts that have gone to Singapore, they all failed within a year or two because they didn't realize that, you know, they should cut down on the sugar level. The ice cream that is still doing quite well in Singapore is Anderson's ice cream from Scandinavia. Yeah. Uh, Chris Gay is a good friend of mine. He is the master franchisee. And he actually makes sure that, uh, you know, his factory cut down all the sugar. Okay. So these are little things that you have to be aware of, you know, and... I, I might be a good resource. Talk to me, uh, you know. I... Okay, this is another typical example. Uh, someone tried to be different, you know. So he's, he had this uh, little saloon next to a pharmacy, thinking that, hey, because rentals like Hong Kong are so expensive, he will carve up a little space so that he save on rentals. But his, his business dropped a lot because Singaporeans feel that a saloon is where a lot of hair fly around and it's not hygienic. And people start pat uh, stop patronizing the pharmacy because they feel that it's dirty. You know, so a lot of perceptions, you know. Uh, you, you, you need to be aware of uh, whether people are sensitive to things like that or not. Uh, ben and Jerry's in Singapore, they actually, because again, they want to generate more business, they actually have parties, birthday parties and what have you in, in, in their shop. Uh, in, in McDonald's, Hong Kong, you know, uh, they organize wedding uh, for the young people. Are they still doing that? H have they stopped it? I, I read in the papers that uh, Mac McDonald's uh, tried to get young people to get married even in, in, in McDonald's. Uh, anyway, so, okay, and like uh, Hong Kong, you know, labor, very expensive. And uh, like I said, the casino suck up a lot of uh, 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 employees. So this, this client of mine is a public listed company called uh, Tong Luk. The Tong Luk group, they have about uh, 12 different concepts under their wing. One of them is Rui, and this, the boss went to Japan and buy a robot. Because, you know, instead of employing so many people in the kitchen just frying noodles and frying rice, he decided that he should use a robot. And the robot is a lot more loyal than his employees. So this has worked quite well for him. So if you go to the Marina Sands Rui in Singapore, you'll find that uh, in, in the restaurant, they actually uh, let you see the robot frying the, you know, the noodles and the rice day in and day out without complaining at all. Now, I was told that I only have two minutes left, so I will just speed up a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, these are just some of the awards we give out uh, every year. Uh, we do a lot of educational programs. Uh, I'm one of the co-authors of this book called Developing and Managing a Franchise. 
Uh, this published by LexisNexis. Uh, and uh, we have done other directories, uh, also published by me. Uh, this is uh, with the backing of the World Franchise Council and the Asia Pacific Franchise Confederation. And if you like, you can go to my booth. I, I, I was told by Norman, my partner. Where are you, Norman? Are you here? Yeah. Norman, can you stand up for a while? For those of you who want to know more about franchising in Hong Kong and Southeast Asia, you can talk to Norman. But we have got about maybe 20 copies left. Okay, uh, this is our 19th year. It is still the only English-Chinese franchise magazine in the world. Uh, you will find inside uh, all the franchise associations, uh, they, they, they actually advertise inside on their franchise show, whether it's Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Taiwan, Hong Kong, China, etc. All the ads are in there. So you know exactly all the calendar of events in Asia. Okay? And then you have got articles from lawyers about franchising, from consultants about franchising. And we write stories, successful stories, and failure stories inside. So if you want a copy, we only have 20 copies left. Okay? Okay, that's how our board is uh, construed. Every year we do this award thing. And that's my team in Singapore. These are some of our clients. Uh, including Crystal Jade, which is very famous in Hong Kong. We did the Crystal Jade uh, franchise uh, system. These are our milestones. These are our partners around the world. So do you feel like working? No? Okay. So what do you want to do? You want to have a party. Okay. That's me. Thank you very much.